Today, Jewish families worried about being targeted in school, wearing symbols of their face walking down the street, or going out about their daily lives. And I know many of you in the Muslim American community, the Arab American community, the Palestinian American community, and so many others are outraged and hearty, saying to yourselves, here we go again with Islamophobia and distrust we saw after 9-11. So I found this to be like a really interesting admission of the fact that many American Muslims and Arab Americans are rightfully scared at this moment. In addition to American Jews who, yes, many of them have been protesting in DC, but also many of them have been on high alert. And this entire like, well, here we go again. And given that this is being called Israel's 9-11, Brett, I don't, I don't feel like that's that fear that here we go again of the hate crimes here we go again of the islamophobia here we go again i feel like that feel i feel like that fear is founded um and i don't see uh, this president doing much to allay that fear that this isn't exactly what uh we saw happen after 9/11 i mean there's a lot there the word admission is interesting to use but like I, when I when I listened to this speech, I was like, he's hitting a lot of things. You, I'm glad he at least hit. I mean, right. not ignoring that, and that's the that's basically Biden's presidency. <laughs> Biden's presidency is like, is he awake? Uh, God, what has he done? Then checks notes and like, there's some good stuff in here. Like, how did you do that with having a brain made of wet toilet paper? <laughs> like, that's that's what it. That's what it feels like to have a right. Biden presidency and just be like, I don't, I don't get it. It's like, it's he's got old man strength in a way where you're just like, how did, you, how are you lifting that box? You look like it's heavier than you. Well, um, I think this is a box that is way too heavy for Joe Biden. But before you continue, let's go because he did name uh, specifically again the six year old who was murdered outside of Chicago. Um, so let let's listen to him. Just last week, a mother was brutally stabbed. A little boy here in the United States, a little boy who just turned six years old was murdered in their home outside of Chicago. His name was Wadiha, Wadiha, a proud American, a proud Palestinian American family. We can't stand by and stand silent when this happens. We must without equivocation denounce anti-Semitism. We must also without equivocation denounce Islamophobia. So there he did name Wadia Al Fayume, who was stabbed by his neighbor in this act in this hate crime. Um, I, I just want to point something out there. He said, "We cannot stand by. We cannot stand by. We must. What must we do? I'm waiting. I'm really excited for what we're going to do to stop Islamophobia, hate crimes, and anti-Semitism. What are we going to do? We're going to condemn." <sighs> okay. What do you want him to do? Just out of curiosity, like what is the right thing to do in that situation? I think he needs to understand that basically, first of all, if you want to actually help, there are organizations right now like Care Council on Islamic Relations that has to move their meetings because of death threats. So if you want, you could actually call on them. You could call on the hotel. You could um, tweet out a statement of support for them. You could, I don't know, you could send security to help them. If you truly wanted to help both Muslims and Jews, there could be extra security at synagogues, extra security at mosques. But there could also be some kind of attempt to de-escalate what is clearly an out of control, both war as well as rhetoric that is leading to things like these hate crimes being committed against this six year old that is leading to people having to fear for their lives getting death threats and such. So it's like what we are doing you're doing with one hand is oh yeah, yeah, yeah let's condemn and the other hand you're like, oh, more war more war and you're just fanning the flames you're lighting that match. So that's what I would like. I'd like a de-escalation. I'd like for the calls for ceasefire not to just come from the crazy squad and these crazy liberal Jews who are out there, oh, progressive Jews saying ceasefire. They're just nuts. No, they're not. They're calling for something so basic right now, which is an end to the death on all sides. And hell, a negotiation for the people who might still be alive, the Israelis who might still be alive within Gaza. Have we forgotten about them? That's what yeah. I'd like. 
I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm all for ceasefire. I'm all for, you know, like it happened. This is this enough has happened for everybody to be at a point where they felt like they, whatever the horrible words are, like saved face, did what they have to do. But a lot of it in this scenario, in this region, is like this statecraft. And it's sloppy and it's some of it happens. And then that that's the only speech Biden can give. And he gave it in a way that's more like acknowledging of realities than most president than Trump would. Um, and then you have to go, you have to give signs of solidarity with your allies, your known allies. You're not gonna change on them because any move you make will be seen. So you gotta do some stuff. But he absolutely needs to do the stuff that I will never be able to confirm whether he did. He needs to behind the scenes get in a room with Benjamin Netanyahu. Find a way to say, all right, it's enough. Find some kind of leverage in that scenario to say, stop it. Because you did the thing that is like, yes, Israel punches harder. Right. That's all. That's it. That's that's what you need to do in this scenario. And then in eight months, we need to, you know, we need to cease fire now. And in eight months, let's get back on two state solution track. That's mm -hmm. what he needs to do. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.